This is building a forum with Rails 5 and material design part 3. We left off in the last episode looking at some data coming back through our Twitter authentication system we started setting up. In this episode we're going to figure out how to store the data, uh, what data we want to store, and then how to actually log the user in. Alright, so let's jump back to the code and I've got application.html.erb open here and I want to just take out one of these links in our navbar and I'm going to make this go to slash auth slash twitter and then I'm going to change this to say sign in with twitter okay then back over here I'm going to stop and start my server just to make sure it's up and running okay and then let's refresh. We have this sign in with Twitter link now. So I click this and it's going to redirect me back because I've already authorized as you saw in the last episode. And then we are here. So this is where we left off pretty much with our user info hash. Okay, so let's try to sort out what information we want to store. All right. So if we look, we have the basic information for the user in this info. So we could say user info, info. And that gives us kind of the majority of the things that we want. We just want the basic user information. Um, we also want to get this unique user ID from Twitter. We want to store the provider. And we probably want to store this token. I'm not sure if we need this secret or not. Um, I will check that out in a little bit. So I'm going to open a new tab in my terminal so I can jump back and forth pretty easily. So I want to be able to see exactly what we're working here with here. So I'm going to say Rails G model user. So we're going to create a new model um, which is uh, Active Record Enhanced Database Connected Object. Um, again, go back to the blog course if that sounds completely foreign to you. Um, so let's start with the provider and user ID. So we'll say, um, so we're going to give it the attributes we want in the database. So we're going to say provider string UID. Let's look over there. That's a string. Let's get the uh, nickname, I guess is how we should call that. That's how Twitter calls it, so that's fine. Um, name, string, email, string. Um, let's get the location and the image. And let's call that the image URL because they call it the image, but I prefer URL because you're going to use it like in a in a URL kind of field. Let's grab the description and then let's go ahead and get the token and the secret. Sorry for this being so dragged out, but let's do this. So description, let's just get that text uh, in case we have a little bit longer information there. And then we'll say um, token, string, and secret, string. Okay, that's quite a bit. Make sure you spell all that correctly. So we'll generate that and then we'll say Rails DB migrate. And that should set up our database table for us. Okay, so let's jump back over to the code. And let's go, let's close everything and let's open up our sessions controller. So in here, um, let's let's actually think about how we want to do this. So we have this user class now that was generated when we ran that command. So what we can do is write a method in here called something like um, save, let's call it create or update from auth info. That reads pretty nicely. So let's put a binding.pride there. Let's delete that one and let's say user.creatorUpdate from. 
And then instead of putting this in a variable, I'm just going to pass it in directly like that. So instead of user info, it's going to be off info now. But yeah, this, this should work okay for now. So if you're like me, you still have a pry running over here that we need to quit out of. And then we can jump back over here and we can try again. Go back to the root path. Maybe, let's see what's happening here. Okay, now we're going. Okay, so now if I click signing with Twitter, should kick me back into undefined method, create or update from. Okay, so that's my mistake. So back in the code, this needs to be self dot. And that is the difference between a class method and an instance method. If you don't put self in front of it, it thinks you're calling this on a user instance. So that is my bad there. Let's go back over here. Let's try again. Refresh this. Click the link. Now we should be stuck in here. So if we look at auth info, it's exactly what we had before. So let's take a look at user.new. So we have a provider that we need. So let's figure out how to get that. So we're going to say auth info provider like that. We have a UID, so we need auth info UID, I believe, is there. Okay, the nickname is going to be auth info nickname, so on and so forth. So we can get the name, email, location, image URL, description from all that. Then the token and the secret come out of credentials. So that doesn't exist, so I did that wrong. We need to come here and do this. So we're just accessing all of the hash stuff here. And I'm just taking a look at exactly, I like typing it in and seeing exactly what we're going to do. So what we're wanting to do is, what, what defines this as unique is so we know that if we have a user ID from Twitter, that those two things combined are going to result in a unique record. And what I mean by that is Twitter keeps an ID for every user, and every ID has to be unique. So it's possible that if we were to add something like GitHub authentication later, it's possible that you could have a person who has uh, the same ID as somebody else in a different system. So like maybe my ID on Twitter is five, and maybe some guy named Bob, his ID on GitHub is five. So why that matters is because I want to look up the user who has the user ID of five, and I need to make sure that it's from the right service. So what we're going to do is say something to the effect of user dot where uh, UID is let's just use my example five and provider provider is Twitter so we're gonna have some kind of query like this and that's gonna make sure that we can look the user up correctly alright so let's jump back to our user class and let's write this out so we'll say something like user equals uh, where Let's see where um, UID is auth info UID and provider is auth info provider. And there's a cool thing in Rails where you can do first or create. All right. So this is either going to return back to us the first one it finds where that's true, which there should only be one where that's true. And so that's valid, or it's going to create the first one. If the Well, if the first one doesn't exist, it's going to create one for us. Okay. So at this point, we have a user for sure. So what we want to do is actually update this user with the rest of the information. So every time they log in, they may have changed something on their Twitter account or 
um, whatever. So we want to make sure we have the most up-to-date information. So we'll say user.update. And then in here, we will just specify the attributes we want. So let's say, let me actually refresh my memory over here. Um, so we have nickname, name, email, location. So I'm just going to write all these down. Nickname, name, email, location. Then we have image URL, description, token, secret. Image URL, description, token, secret. Okay, so let's fill these out. So the nickname is from auth info, info, nickname. Then you need to have a comma. So for the next four, five, six, I guess six, I'm just going to paste this and we'll change it. And then the last one, this was token. And this is credentials. And then this last one should be credentials secret. And let's see. Okay, so here, this is just image, not image URL. This is location, email, and name. So one thing I tend to do is get all of these things lined up because it's a lot easier to scan and kind of see what's going on. Okay, so let's just review really quick. Info, nickname, name, email, location, image. Yep, I did miss one there. Description. And we have token and secret. Okay, so let's try this out. So to do that, over here, I'm just going to quit. I don't think I need to restart my server or anything for this. So let's just go back to the root path and try this whole thing again. So if I click sign in with Twitter. Okay, so I took out the price, so it was going to stop for sure. So if I jump over here, I can run Rails C. And let's see user.count. We should have one. User.first. And let's check all the information out. So it's Twitter. It's got my user ID, TechMaker TV, Steven Pfizer, no email, which is what we saw. And we have my, we have everything. Cool. So now that we have all this, uh, we can actually get the sign in working. So what we can do is in our controller so we'll say user equals that and then we'll say session user id equals user dot id okay nope not idea and we will just redirect to root path okay so once we do that so what this is going to do is just going to throw still kept idea okay so we don't want the users ideas well maybe we do but not right now um, so once we do this what this is going to do is store the ID in a session so we can access it uh, between requests or um, across many requests I should say so once we have this we can go into our application controller so all of our controllers inherit from application controller. So what that means for us is that if we define some logic here, we can access it everywhere. So we're going to define something called current user, which is a very common pattern. So what you're going to say is something like at current user or equals uh, user dot find by ID and we'll say session user ID okay and then we can write this method we can do something called helper method I promise I'll explain this a little bit in just a second so what this does 
So first of all, let's let's break this apart because some of this may be slightly confusing. So this is an instance variable, which is a variable that's defined on an instance of an object. So every time a request comes into our system, there's a new instance of application controller created or whatever controller you're in. So if you're like in discussions controller, it is an application controller because it inherits from application controller, which you can see here. Um, so every time a new request comes in, this instance variable will get set. What this or equals does is it's basically like saying if there's an instance variable of this, don't do this. And the reason is, is like, let me actually type that out so that it makes more sense. So this is basically like saying if there is already a current user defined, just give me that one. Else, look up the user. And what's useful about this is there may be like a page where we call current user like five times or 10 times or 50 times or whatever. And what that would do if you don't do this is it would call the database however many times you call that, which is really bad for performance. So what you want to do is basically store it once and then if you need it again in that request you just pull it out of your variable instead of like looking it up over and over and over again so that's what we're doing this is um yeah so anyway hopefully that's self-explanatory um then we're looking up the user you can call find so this is a decision that I made just now. Um, you can call find, but the thing about find is if you call find and you pass in nil, it blows up and throws an error. So you have an option here. You can do find if session, da 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 da, like if the session user ID is present. Um, personally, I like this better because it just returns nil if it doesn't find anything. And so, you know, I, I just like that better. So another thing I want to do, um, we can do something like user logged in and then we'll just check if the current user is present and then I'm going to define this helper method here so these helper methods um, make these uh, methods available all over the place sort of so it makes it where you can use this in your views for instance um, anyway we'll see that in action in just a second so we're, we're good here Okay, so let's test a couple of things out. So let me close this stuff for a minute. Let's open up our application HTML file. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say if a user logged in, which is that method we just defined, that here and so if the user is logged in we actually want to render a link to sign out so what I'm gonna do is say uh, link to sign out which we have not defined a path for yet so we are just gonna leave that like that and that should be good okay so what we're doing, if the user is logged in, give them a link to sign out. Otherwise, give them a link to sign in with Twitter. So now we should be able to go back, and this should work. So if I click sign in with Twitter, it should redirect me back. Undefined method ID for true class. All right. I know what I did here. So let's go to the user class user.update and then we just want to return user after that I think I don't know some we may need to call reload I'm not sure let's just try this okay so let's try that again sign in with Twitter redirect me back and now I have a sign out link perfect okay so let's get the sign out working so we need to add a route, and there's a number of ways you can do this. I like to just do a get request. Uh, some people are going to disagree with me. It's just my preference because it's a little easier. 
Um, let's jump over to the auth controller or sessions controller. Um, actually, so we need to point it at the sessions controller and we'll say sign out like that. So I like to use dashes in the URL and underscores in, well, Ruby is underscore base like that. So I don't know, something I, I do. Um, again, not everyone agrees with me. Sign out. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is say session.delete and then we're gonna say user ID and then redirect to the root path again. That should be all we need to do. Oh no, it's not. I need to change in here. So one thing we covered in the blog course is if you wanna have a named route, you have to say as sign out. And what this will give us is something called, where we can do like sign out path. So here I can say sign out path. And now it should work. So if I click sign out, I am logged out. And if I click sign in with Twitter, it's gonna redirect, now I'm logged in. Perfect. So um, there's a couple of quick things we could do really fast just to give you a couple of ideas of things you might wanna mess with um, until the next lesson. Um, I'm not gonna leave this, but I'm just gonna throw it in here for now so you can kinda of get some ideas. So we have this current user object, which we haven't really used yet. So, um, so we could say something in here like signed in as current user dot name and then maybe like sign out as a like that so sign in as Stephen Pfizer sign out we could I mean I don't I don't particularly like that I think what would probably be more common is to see something like um, where you have like your name and your picture so you can do you, you can Let's just have the sign out path there and we can have like um, image tag um, and then it's going to be current user dot image URL and then we'll say like um, width 50 height 50 and let's see that that prints out there I am. Okay, um, that was kind of weird how that positioned. Oh well, I'm not gonna get sidetracked. Not gonna get sidetracked. I think that's gotta be it for this lesson. It's getting kind of long. Um, just wanted to show you how you could kind of call some methods on current user and um, you can basically access all the attributes that we added. So I'm gonna leave this like this for now. Um, like I said, in the next episode, what we're going to be doing is restricting who can see, well, I guess, we, I have to decide. I think I'm going to leave it so that everybody can see everything. But you shouldn't see this button for new discussions, and you should not be able to edit or delete anything if you don't own it. So if you're not logged in, you can't start new discussions. If you don't own the discussion, you can't edit it or delete it. So I think that's going to be next time, and then maybe after that we'll work on maybe some design stuff and starting to work on how do people can add comments and that sort of thing. So anyway, I hope you like this. If you do, please remember to click like, please remember to subscribe, and I will talk to you next time.